We're Pam and Chalbert from Two Bikes for Adventure. We've always been interested in touring on folding bicycles, and we've tried a few models. Since 2014, we've been traveling with our Bromptons, but prior to that, we toured with Birdie Bicycles for several years. Both bike brands have their fan base, where users feel a strong sense of loyalty to one or the other, similar to Apple versus Android or PlayStation versus Xbox. Having toured with both, we can evaluate and compare their pros and cons. First, a bit of folding bike history. The first Brompton, the Mark I, was released in 1982. Since then, three more versions were released. The latest, the Mark IV, launched in 2005. Some cosmetic changes to the stem, handlebars, and speed selector were introduced in mid-2017, but overall, not much has changed since 2005. We own a pair of 2001 Mark III T3s, as well as two 2016 Mark IV M6Rs. The Birdie family tree is shorter. Created in 1995, the award-winning Mark I was available for a decade before being replaced in 2006 by a new monocoque design, the Mark II. An approved version of the monocoque design, the Mark III, was introduced in 2015. A slightly redesigned vintage look Mark I has been reintroduced in some markets under the name New Classic. Quite popular in Asia, the Birdie is also available in Europe, but is rare in North America. We own two late model Mark I Classic Birdies. While our comparison won't pit the latest Brompton against the latest Birdie, we feel that most of our points are still applicable. In this evaluation, we will rate the bikes using a scorecard in these main areas. Ride quality, reliability, foldability, luggage carrying capacity, maintenance and upgrade, and appearance. While the rear suspensions of both bicycles are relatively similar in design, consisting of a polyurethane or polymer block between the main triangle and the rear triangle, the main differentiator is the Birdie's front anti-dive suspension. This cleverly designed suspension is distinctive and provides a superior riding experience, particularly when cycling long distances. The adjustable handlebar stem on the Birdie makes it easier to adapt to the rider's preference. Birdie also offers an optional horizontal stem extension for those who need a longer reach. Unlike the Brompton, where you decide at purchase time on an S, M, or H handlebar model. The seat post setup is quite similar, but Birdie provides an engraved scale on the post to quickly set seat height after unfolding, and its quick-release seat clamp tension can be adjusted without using a tool. The Brompton Pentaclip design is quite clever, but it basically just compensates for an old-school seat post attachment point. The Birdie is based on a much more contemporary design. The conventional derailleur arrangement on the Birdie provides more gears and less friction than the Brompton. Furthermore, because the Birdie's rear triangle is a standard width, the gearing can be upgraded with a choice of off-the-shelf third-party gearing options, including a 14-speed roll-off, at a fraction of what it would cost to implement on a Brompton. Our Birdies are equipped with 8-speed Shimano and 9-speed SRAM group set. The Shimano and Avid V-brakes on our Birdies give a slightly better feel than the dual-pivot Brompton proprietary setup although the latest Brompton models have improved in this area. Birdie offers disc brakes as an option, something that's an expensive proposition to integrate onto a Brompton. Although our Birdie Mark I classics are not new, in many aspects they seem decades ahead of even the latest Mark IV Brompton. This may be an advantage in performance, but it comes as, at a cost in reliability and robustness. Compare the stem clamp. The Bromptons couldn't be simpler. Two parts, low tech, unlikely to break. The birdie clamp is an intricate mechanism that, yes, failed eventually on Gilbert's bike and explains why he has this twisted metal wire here. At the other end of the spectrum, some of the birdie initial design decisions seem surprisingly under-engineered, as though waiting for a catastrophe to occur. These include the rear triangle latch, a simple plastic piece that could break when the bike is folded, and a derailleur that is so low to the ground we still wonder how we avoided tearing it apart while riding on road debris. 
The absence of a hinge in the Birdie main aluminum frame makes it stiffer and reduces a potential failure point compared to Brompton steel frame. However, aluminum is also more susceptible to abrasion, as can be seen here in the front fork where the fender interfered with the suspension and on the front baggage hook. Some of these issues may have been addressed in the latest Birdie models. And while our birdies never suffered significant mechanical failures during our trips, we think of them as more fragile purebreds compared with Brompton's low-tech, timeless design. We often take the chance to ship our Bromptons in padded IKEA DEMPA bags, whereas we would not take a similar risk with our birdies. After years of practice with both bicycles, we can fold the Brompton much faster than the birdie. We don't need to select a particular gear, lift the bicycle off the ground, nor get our hands dirty. The possibility of the birdie's chain falling from the chain ring is a concern, especially considering the low-tech chain tensioner used on the birdie compared to the Brompton. The Brompton is tough to beat when folded. Smaller and with fewer parts sticking out, it's unlikely to unfold while being carried in contrast with the birdie. The Brompton front hook is a far superior design to the friction screw head offered by birdie. The Brompton is more stable when folded, especially with the rack option. We pretty much have to prop the birdie against a fixed object if we don't want it to fall on its side when left alone. The front suspension polymer block is likely to drop off when carrying the bike. We've lost two of these already. We've rarely been refused to bring our Bromptons into hotel rooms while the birdie was often told to sleep outside as even folded, it still looked like a bike that wasn't welcome indoors. Despite having a bigger form factor when folded, the Birdie can be easily disassembled and put in a smaller suitcase than the Brompton when traveling by air. It's a bit more work, but can be an advantage on some airlines where luggage dimension is at a premium. On the other hand, we sometimes prefer a bigger suitcase and less assembly and disassembly. Because air travel with the Birdie necessitates a hard side case, we always had to make arrangements to store the case while touring. For more details on how we pack for air travel, see our video, Three Ways to Fly with Your Folding Bike. The weight of both models is similar, but the presence of easy wheels, smaller form factor and stability when folded, and less risk of unfolding while being carried, make the Brompton a better candidate for intermodal travels. For an itinerary that involves multiple transports like train, bus, and boat, the Brompton is the winner. While both Brompton and Birdie offer 10 kilograms of front cargo capacity, the approach is quite different. Birdie has a folding bracket that can accommodate conventional front panniers, such as the Ortlib front roller. Two 10-liter panniers are sufficient for our type of touring, but the added weight on the steering is quite noticeable when turning at speed. The Brompton relies on a proprietary front carrier block that is versatile and simple to use. And because it's mounted on the main frame instead of the fork, it has less impact on the steering. When off the bike, one 20 liter ba bag is also easier to manage than two bags of 10 liters. The expanding range of Brompton compatible bags makes Brompton a compelling winner for a wide range of uses. The Brompton rear rack can carry an extra 10 kilograms, but any cargo must be carefully loaded to avoid heel strike. The Birdie offers an equivalent option with 10 kilo capacity, but in typical Birdie fashion is slightly over-engineered. The folding rear rack sits significantly higher, however, and permits carrying conventional touring panniers without the risk of heel strike. It's also easy to remove when not required. Brompton's H and M type handlebars real estate is relatively limited. The conventional birdie handlebar offers more surface area to install a GPS, a smartphone, a headlight, or a handlebar bag. Finding replacement tires for small folding bikes while touring can be a problem. This is particularly true for the birdie's unconventional 18-inch tire. While more manufacturers are now offering this size, it remains a niche market and may explain why a new 20-inch birdie is becoming popular in Asia. For both bikes, we strongly suggest bringing a spare tire while touring. Brompton is almost 100% proprietary parts. This complicates maintenance while touring. It's unlikely a regular bike shop will store the necessary part to repair a damaged Brompton. While a birdie may have more parts, some of them, namely gearing, hubs, and brakes, 
are relatively standard and can be easily fixed, replaced, or upgraded by any bike shop. The relatively slow evolution of the Brompton design and its ever-increasing popularity and worldwide dealer network make the maintenance of even the older models relatively easy. In many cases, new model parts are backward compatible with older Bromptons. Through the years, we had no problem maintaining our 2001 Bromptons. This is quite the opposite with our birdies. Parts of the older Mark I model are now difficult, if not impossible, to find, worse in North America, and newer models are less likely to be backward compatible. The overall look of a bike is in the eye of the beholder, and most likely open to endless argument. Furthermore, we must agree it has minimal impact on the touring capabilities of the bike. Nonetheless, traveling on folding bikes is bound to attract attention, and our small wheel transport is a frequent cause of questions from passers-by. Although both models stand out, we find that the Birdie's overall appearance is more intriguing and forward-looking than the perennial Brompton design. The Birdie design has evolved through the years, and its basic frame dimensions make it possible to incorporate options that can only be dreamt of on a Brompton, like disc brakes, 24 speeds, or roll-off hub. Brompton, on the other hand, has been content to keep the now iconic design intact. The Timeless model does offer many advantages, simplicity, robustness, ease of maintenance, and resale value, but may leave some of us wishing for more. When we tally up the final score, we see the differences between the numbers in each area are clear. The Birdie wins big in ride quality and design, while the Brompton has the upper position in foldability. The type of touring should influence the choice of folding bicycle. For short daily distances, less than 100 kilometers per day, where no camping is required and intermodal transport is likely, a six-speed Brompton will be ideal. For a longer ride, where more comfort is demanded and only occasional folding and unfolding is foreseen, a birdie with a four pannier setup will likely be superior. In either case, you will be the proud owner of an exceptional folding bicycle. We hope that our experiences with these two types of small wheel folders clarifies their strengths and weaknesses. <laughs>